what I want to do is pursue this issue that comes through very clearly. Given that women are doing better in the workplace, earning better money, and it's terrific that the chains have been thrown off, but it does create a problem, to, to use language that I think you'd understand, I don't think you use it, but those sort of protector provider instincts, the sort of the tester on lo uh, loaded man who mm -hmm. wants to slay the dragon, mm -hmm. look after the family, mm -hmm. defend them. There are not a lot of wars going around at the moment and we hope they don't come back. I don't think we can guarantee that, but we hope yes. they don't. Yes. It is a different world. And as I've, and I've said this before, people who have watched these conversations will say, don't tell me he's going to refer to it again, but I watched Jordan Peterson in front of a live audience of young, mainly younger people, mm -hmm. uh, young men vastly overrepresented mm -hmm. in Sydney. And what I saw there, because he was giving a tough message, you know, Jordan wouldn't claim to be a rock star or a celluloid mm -hmm. hero or whatever, but they were there hanging on every word, giving him standing ovations. And his message was a tough one. He was basically saying, lift your game, be yes. noble, yes. strive to be better. Yes. And there were young men wanting to respond to that. I think that's tremendously important. Yes. Yes. But how do we get them to clearly see their role in an age when they don't have to slay dragons? That's why I'm saying to the White House, we need to create a father warrior program. A father we, warrior program. Warrior, w a r r i o r. Yeah, yeah. yeah, warrior program, and that that we need to give males a new sense of purpose. Instead of you know, uh, instead of being the ones who are uh, killed and uh, killing um, overseas, uh, we need fewer of men to do, men to do that. We still need men to do that, but we or people to do that. Um, but we need many, many more men to be father warriors, to be trained from when they're very young, to communicate well, to care, to know that caring for their children will be something that will make them attractive. And we have to, in, we have to work with our daughters to be able to fall in love with men who are caring and loving and potentially full-time fathers even, or a certain part-time or full-time fathers. You, in your book, say that the best parent is two parents. Yes. But you have very practical advice when it does go wrong. Yes. And for those who still want to make it work as well as possible. Uh, and I think it centres on things like communication, um, not moving too far apart, not making the mistake of saying, well, I'll get my kids out of here and we'll take them to a different part of the country and move them into a better school, but rather trying to make certain that there really is joint involvement yes. in those children's lives. You paint that is very important. Yes, I would say that one of the things I discovered in doing the research for the boy crisis is that there's a what I would call four must do's if you're going to be divorced. Must do number one is that you have about an equal amount of involvement of the father and mother. Must do number two is that the father and mother live within about 20 minutes drive time from each other so that the children do not fee, um, resent the going to another parent's house and having to miss soccer practice or having to miss a birthday party of, a, of one of their best friends. Number three is that the child is not able to uh, he overhear any bad mouthing or detect any bad negative body language when the other parent is brought up, when the absent parent is being brought up, because the child then becomes afraid of speaking positively about the absent parent um, and, um, and, and has to keep the, the, that whole other part of their life to themselves. Number four, that there be consistent communication, counseling or relationship counseling that the mother and father attend. It can be as little as once a month, but um, it shouldn't just be when there's an emergency because emergencies force fast decisions to be made and prevent both the mother and father from understanding the best intent and the logic that leads to each person having a different way of making that decision. And you can disagree with your partner, but at least it's important to know that the woman or man that you divorced has a set of reasons that have the best intent of the child at heart, um, even though they may be different from your reasons. And the purpose of co consistent communication counseling that is not emergency-based is so that both parents can hear what is the reasons that allow them to see that even if I disagree with my wife or my former wife or former husband, that at least they have the best intent of that child at heart. You're very strong on practical things that people can do. The issue of 
single mums seeking to do the best thing they can by their boys and their girls. Mm -hmm. What advice do you offer in a situation where they're really wondering how best to, to look after their yes. kids' needs? Well, I'll when get there's to, no dad, there's no male there. I'll get to the easy part first and then the tough part second. The easy part is um, the Cub Scouts or the Australian equivalent of Cub Scouts, at least in the United States, and I'm sure in Australia too, um, getting young boys involved with other boys um, in a way that they're rewarded when they do things that are constructive and good. And um, also in Boy Scouts, um, boys learn the best of masculinity and the best of character development in Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts and organizations where there is a lot of boys together and they're learning how to be um, kind and loyal and have integrity and accomplish things. Um, and they're getting merit badges for accomplishing things so that they have a certain amount of status for um, achieving things successfully. Um, it's also important if you're at all faith-based in your orientation to seek out a faith-based community to make sure that the leader of that faith-based faith -based community is a good, constructive, caring, loving, and able to connect male, but most important, that he gets your son involved with other boys his age uh, that, um, that and, and facilitates those boys talking about what's behind their mask of masculinity. All boys have masks of masculinity that make them feel like they have to keep their feelings to themselves, but that makes them feel lonely and isolated and depressed. And so when boys hear that every other boy has, has, has the same insecurities that he has, it frees boys to not have to um, be destructive and to show off and to bully other boys in order to f feel like they're, the be they're a number one type of alpha male. Uh, so that's very important. It is crucial to get your son involved, even if he resists it, in sports, in three types of sports, what I call the liberal arts of sports. Um, one is the um, team sports, which is number one and most important um, for sort of obvious reasons. And that's wonderful preparation for teaching your son to get along in organizations, in corporations, um, in, in any group, profit or nonprofit, uh, where um, working as a team is part of the, uh, the what helps you to win and be successful and happy. Uh, number two is pick up team sports. Um, pick up team sports where the boy goes to the, say the um, school and picks up a game. Uh, that's perfect preparation for being a wonderful entrepreneur. Uh, so the boy has to say, okay, who do I want here? This is a stranger. How do I assess this stranger? Okay, do we pull, play full court basketball or half court basketball? What are the parameters? What are the rules? Um, should we allow fouling? Should we not allow fouling? If so, by how much? Uh, who, uh, when this boy tells me to pass the ball to him, is he somebody that just wants to show off or does he have a good angle and a good shot to do? Um, is my girlfriend watching and therefore I'm afraid to, I want to take the shot myself, even if he has a better angle. All these things are learned. Hundreds of lessons are learned from pickup team sports that have you cre that don't that don't make you dependent on a supervisor to provide rules for you, but help you learn how to create your own rules. So pickup team sports in the United States is a huge left out um, phenomenon. And then last is um, is individual sports like swimming or tennis or gymnastics, where you have a team that you're contributing to, but your discipline largely comes from disciplining yourself over and over and over again, repetitive, boring types of things like swimming hundreds of laps in order to be the best swimmer. And so all three of those, uh, that creates self-starting skills. Um, and so it's important to involve your son in all three sports. However, I said, that's the easy stuff. The tough stuff is if you um, is many times when there's a divorce, a woman will uh, get involved with and marry a man who becomes a stepdad. And so oftentimes she has to understand that a stepdad almost always feels like he can never be anything more than an advisor unless there's plenty of permission created by the mom to understand dad style parenting and to understand that its value is very important. So uh, I would most advise reading the 10 uh, steps, the 10 differences between dad style parenting and mom style, style parenting in the Boy Crisis book, because so many moms have learned that you know, the types of things that they thought were irresponsibility on the part of the father, like the roughhousing or letting the child play in the playground uh, without supervision are actually things that are, can be used by the right types of fathers toward really long-term benefits of the child, but that does not come naturally to the great majority of moms. 
and it doesn't come naturally to the great majority of dads to be able to explain that well to moms. And to dads that are listening, if you're a stepdad, you need to do your homework and lovingly explain to your to the mom what your contribution can be, and then also hear what her contribution can be, and do the checks and balance parenting of good communication about that. And then um, last, I would say, is, is being when you're aware of those nine differences between dad-style parenting and mom-style parenting, you've got to reassess the biological dad and say, is there, are there things that he does naturally but hasn't explained to me that will make it valuable for him to be back in the child's, um, uh, in the child's life? Because the child looks, especially the boy child, looks in the, in the mirror, and when he doesn't see his father and he feels abandoned by his father, the hole that that creates and the sense of purposelessness that happens with so many boys that don't have dads um, has overwhelmed me um, with understanding the importance of the biological dad uh, because the boy is not the son of the stepdad. The boy is the son of the biological dad primarily. And so um, go out of your way to understand what that contribution is and how important that is to your son. Your daughter has her biological mother in you, and she has the ability to express feelings. Your son does not have his biological father, and he has the propensity to repress feelings. The repression of feelings and the absence of the dad is a terrible combination. We have in Australia the Fathering Project. Uh, I'm its national patron, uh, and it was born at the University of Western Australia, Professor Bruce Robinson, practical tips for dads who want to be involved but aren't quite sure how. I can't think of anything that would be more important than a fathering project and a communication skills project. Those are the two most important um, things that would advance um, Western civilized best of society at this point in history. Thank you for watching this episode. We appreciate your support. If you value vital conversations like this one, be sure to subscribe to the channel there and also click the notification bell to stay up to date with new releases.